The following is an original Leonard Station podcast. Nemechek gets into it. John Hunter Nemechek and Cole Custer. They're wrecking and spinning, coming to the line. Start finish oh, line in up. Darlington. It's Chase Frisco who wins And Brad Jim's on the brakes. Everybody stacks up. Now they're oh, side by side and it's all Side by side. side. The it's the beat. This is going to be a photo finish. It's in a chaotic fashion. Brittany White is going to steal it here at Indy. Here comes Boyles to the inside. And hello, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Friday. Welcome to the NASCAR Piss Off Show. This is episode 22. Hopefully you guys are having yourselves a good start off to your Fridays because... I had myself a pretty good week, and I'm definitely getting my uh, Friday off to a pretty good start with the NASCAR Pit Stop Show and also some other things that are going to be taking place later today because July 3rd is a pretty special day for me because it is the day that I started doing YouTube. So, this is my six-year anniversary. July 3rd, 2014 is when I... Uh, really got started and it's these last six years have been have gone by super quick and just it's crazy to see how much things have happened and changed along the way and just you know it's unbelievable and uh, I definitely want to thank everybody for uh, just six awesome years on on YouTube and hopefully we can get up to 10 years here in a little bit or just four years away from that and uh, hopefully we can do this for many, many other years to come. And hopefully we can get the Pit Stop Show and Grand Slam, the Leonard Station, uh, in a little bit of a better state at some point in the future. Because I'm still going to keep doing this uh, even uh, when – and just even – even in other times where just where life really is going to start taking control and just starting to say, hey, you know, you got – bills to pay you you have a marriage you've got kids and all that stuff i'm still gonna keep doing this and even as when, when and and any opportunity that i'm gonna have so i uh, just wanted to uh say thank you guys a lot for watching uh this pit stop show thank you so much for six awesome years on youtube and be sure to come back here in the lender station at 3 p.m eastern time because we're gonna be having a uh, gaming slash Q and A live stream that will be at three to seven p.m. Eastern time, and uh, I am very excited about that. So we're just, it's gonna be fun. Uh, so with that being said, why don't we go ahead and get this party started with uh, recapping the Pocono weekend, starting off with the first Cup race at the Pocono Raceway with Saturday's running of the three hundred of the first three of two cup races that would run at the Tricky Triangle. You had Eric Amarola who started off the race as the pole sitter. I believe he started on the outside. Lap 13 was the uh, lap of the competition caution. Uh, and then on the 17th lap you had Eric Amarola lead him down to the restart but then the double zero of Quinn Hauf ended up spinning and crashing on the restart which brought out the caution. Stage one winner on lap 26 was Joey Logano. Lap 65 you had JJ Yaley lose a tire and in the process of that because of all the debris that was shed from that tire it brought out a caution flag on lap 65. On lap 72 uh, Eric Jones and Tyler Reddick ended up crashing on the front straightaway and from the looks of it, Eric Jones had to get out of the gas. He got a little loose coming off of the final corner, off of what turn four. And Tyler Reddick came in and hit his left rear with a full head of steam and just absolutely uh, drilled him. And went, both of them went into the inside wall, uh, take, ending both of their chances of winning the first cup race at Pocono, the Saturday race at Pocono. Lap 78, you had Eric Almirola take home stage number two, and then to start off stage three, Eric Almirola started uh, the final stage on the front row. On lap 115, Clint Boyer blew a right rear tire uh, 
move right rear tire, and I believe he was able to make it back to pit road. Then, on lap 115, Alex Bowman blows a right rear tire, and uh, there was a little bit of debris from the tire that was shed that was on the access road, but it was off the racing surface, and therefore the race stayed green. But then on lap 20, 124, Joey Logano blew a left front tire. He managed to make it to pit road, and everybody and the drivers uh, were able to keep the racetrack clean and green. The race pretty much came down between Kevin Harvick and Denny Hamlin. Those were the two best cars near the end of the race. But however, one, when Hamlin was closing in on uh, Kevin Harvick, he reported a vibration and it just really was not enough to, uh, the effort that he put together just wasn't enough to catch Kevin Harvick because on the very last lap, uh, Hamlin backed off uh, in, by a significant amount, by about three quarters of a second. And that was what sealed the deal for Kevin Harvick to get his fourth win of the season, his first at Pocono overall. So the top 10 goes as follows for the Pocono Organics 325 in partnership with Rodale Institute. Kevin Harvick finishing in the first position and Denny Hamlin finishing second. Eric Amarola, third career day for Christopher Bell as he finished in the fourth spot on Saturday's race. Kyle Busch completes the top five. Then you have Martin Truex Jr. taking home sixth. Clinton Boyer, seventh. Michael McDowell for Front Row Motorsports taking home eighth. Brad Keselowski coming home ninth. And Chris Buescher rounding out the top ten. Then we get to the next race, which took place on Sunday, which, because of the truck race being postponed due to the rain, Sunday became a triple header for NASCAR with I think it was the first ever triple header uh, at one racetrack So the first race that took place obviously as I said before was the truck series after getting postponed because of weather Um, well, lap one I heard that it was a very chaotic race and uh, For what I've seen with all the with the timelines I've been I've been paying attention to the timelines this is where I've been getting this up with this data it, is, it was a pretty crazy race. On the first lap, you had Johnny Sauter uh, starting on the pole. He led the field with a green flag, but then coming out of turn number one, or going through turn one, Matt Crafton and Cody Robaugh ended up crashing throughout the, through the first corner, and that brought out the first caution of the day for the truck race, for the truck series. Then on lap number six, on the restart, you had Sheldon Creed uh, leaning back to the green flag, but then it looked like that they were almost going to make it all the way back around to complete a lap. However, though, you had a multi-truck crash in turn number three. That brought out a caution flag once again. On lap 12, there was a caution that came out for Ty Majeski, who spun from the third position. He ended up, I think he ended up making contact with the wall. I think it was with the inside wall. Not exactly sure which part of the racetrack it was. But all I know is that Ty Majeski did end up spinning out. Lap 15, Sheldon Creed makes the pass on Austin Hill for the stage one win. Those two had actually been going at it for a little while, but then Creed managed to pull off a, uh, a little pass on Austin Hill to win stage number one. Uh, and I did not even know that this race was gonna be a two stage race. Uh, at all, uh, because apparently this is the first and currently only two-stage race that uh, that we've seen in NASCAR history, recent NASCAR memory. Uh, but still, Sheldon Creed ends up racing stage two on lap number 20. On lap 21, the very next lap, Brendan Poole ends up hitting the wall from the 14th position. He has a little bit of uh, issues with the tire as well. On lap 23, Brendan Poole ended up losing the tire, and that's what brought out a caution because of the debris probably shed from the tire. Lap 28, Jordan Anderson ended up spinning with a flat tire from, I believe it was the 11th position, and, that's, and that brought out yet another caution. Lap 34, you had Zane Smith lead the field back to the restart, and on the very next lap, Sheldon Creed and Tanner Gray ended up wrecking from the 14th and 15th positions and that's what brought out another caution. Another caution came out in the process. 
Lap 49, Christian Eckes ended up spinning from the lead with a right rear, with a right rear uh, down, and ended up crashing into the inside wall from turn number one, which brought out yet another caution. On lap 53, you had Clay Greenfield ended up ended up smoking from the 23rd position, you, and they still kept the green flag out. Lap 55 saw Tim Vines uh, go around from the 27th position, and that's what brought out a, yet a ninth and what was going to be the final caution of the race. Then on lap 60 with the, uh, I believe it was an overtime attempt, Brandon Jones and Sheldon Creed ended up going at it for the top position and for the win as well. But on the final lap, Brandon Jones manages to get by Sheldon Creed and secure his first career NASCAR Gander RV and Outdoors Truck Series victory. Here's your top 10 from the Truck Series race. You had Brandon Jones scoring the win. Austin Hill coming home in the second position, position, then Sheldon Creed third. Todd Gilliland coming home in fourth, and you had Ben Rhodes complete the top five. Ross, Ross Chastain finishing in sixth. Brett Moffat seventh. Stuart Friesen eighth. Tyler Ankrum ninth. And Derek Krause comes home inside of the top ten. All right, next race to take place is the Pocono Green 225, represented by J.P. Mascaro and Sons. Uh, for the NASCAR Xfinity Series race, the second race to run during the day. Noah Gragson ended up starting off the race from the pole position, but unfortunately, Brandon Jones, who was fresh off of his first win in the Truck Series, he ends up wrecking coming out of turn number one, and that knocked him out of the race and brought out the first caution of the day. Lap five. Lap five, there was a restart, but then... <laughs> then uh, right after that, right after the restart, Josh Williams and Daniel Hemrick ended up getting together, and they brought out yet another caution. Lap 11, just saw Justin Allgaier, while he was battling for the lead, get sideways off of turn number one. Luckily, though, he ended up saving it, and there was not a caution uh, thrown out, so we stayed green. A lap 15. Harrison Burton gets loose off of turn number one and ends up hitting the inside wall. Similar spot to where Harrison Burton hit on the first lap. And that brought out yet another caution. On lap 18, Austin Sindrick led the field back to the green flag to, re to get the stage finished up under green flag conditions. Chad Fincham in the process of this ended up stacking the field up. Then on lap 20, saw Austin Sindrick take home the stage one win. Lap 27 saw Ross Chastain get stage two officially underway. Not really a whole lot happened throughout stage two, but Justin Allgaier managed to come around to take home the stage two win on lap number 40. On lap 45, Ross Chastain gets stage number three started, then four laps later, Riley Herbst, after a little assist from Justin Haley, Spins out from the seventh position, and that's when another caution comes out. And little note on lap number 49, Justin Haley and his crew chief, I believe, got called to the hauler for aggressive driving. I'm not sure what the penalties are going to look like for uh, Justin Haley, but one thing is for sure, they may not be uh, too, too light. They may not be all that light. I'm not, I'm not sure, but we'll see. Lap 53, Ross Chastain leads him to the restart, but then on the just as soon as they get the race restarted, Noah Gregson, Daniel Hemrick, Carson Ware, Austin Sindrick, and Ryan Sieg end up crashing on the long pond straightaway, therefore bringing out another caution. Lap 69, another yellow would come out for Chase Briscoe, who ended up spinning from the lead with a flat tire. Uh, but Briscoe was able to get back into the fight, and uh, we'll get to him in just a little bit. Lap 73, Mike Snyder leads at the restart, and uh, so far so good for him on in that area right there. Uh, but lap 83, you had Chase Briscoe and Ross Chastain. So Briscoe got back in the fight after losing a tire and going around on lap 69. Of all laps, lap 69. 
and they're trading first place. They are passing each other. They're going hard for the lead. And then on lap 85, Chad Fincham ends up hitting the wall, therefore bringing out yet another caution, which sets up an overtime. Chase Briscoe leads on that, on that category. And then Ross Chastain ends up getting away for a little bit, but Chase Briscoe manages, managed to find a way to get around uh, Ross Chastain by loosening him up just a little bit. Got around him, through the tunnel turn, and didn't look back. And Chase Briscoe manages to get his first win at the Tricky Triangle. First Pocono win, uh, just to clarify. So, top 10 goes as follows for the Xfinity race at Pocono. Chase Briscoe ends up at the winner. Ross Chastain coming home in the second position. Jeremy Clements in third. Not too bad for him. Mike Snyder finishing fourth. Michael Annette rounding out the top five. Then you have Justin Allgaier, Brett Moffat, Timmy Hill, Riley Herbst, and Jesse Little rounding out the top ten. All right, now it's time to get on down to the main event of Sunday's festivities with the second cup race of the season, the 350-mile race, the Pocono 350. Saw Ryan Priest go to the rear of the field, which moved Kurt Busch up to the front row, and he led the field down to the green flag alongside Austin Dillon. Uh... With a little help from Cole Custer, uh, Kurt Busch managed to go to the point. First caution of the day came out for rain on lap number five. And uh, Tyler Reddick, who was running in 39th, complaining that he had no power steering. Uh, so, uh, trouble, tr so trouble struck early for Tyler Reddick in the number uh, eight machine. They managed to get the race restarted on lap number 12 with Kurt Busch continuing to... Uh, say out front, Ryan Blaney uh, was on the inside on the restart, and then lap 14, just about two laps later, Chase Elliott got into the back of Michael McDowell on the front straightaway, and that messed him up just a little bit, and McDowell, uh, going through the tunnel turn, ended up wrecking in turn number two, and that unfortunately took him out of contention to get himself another good finish, and also out of, uh, out of the race as well, unfortunately on lap number 15, which was the very next lap. That brought out yet another caution. Lap 31, Kurt Busch uh, got his first stage win of the season and uh, managed to secure it at Pocono and, and held off Ryan Blaney in the process. So he, he was pretty far away from Ryan Blaney anyway, so uh, Kurt Busch managed to uh, get the stage one win fairly easily. Lap 39 saw Christopher Bell get into the wall from the 18th position, bringing out the caution. And unfortunately, after coming off of a really strong fourth place finish uh, the day prior, uh, he unfortunately could was out of contention for the win and out of the race, uh, out of contention to uh, win anyway. So it's a tough break for Christopher for Christopher Bell. Uh, Lap 45 saw Ryan Blaney lead the field back to the green flag. Then Chris Busher ends up spinning uh, after restarting in the 12th position, getting into the inside wall with the rear. He straightened it out and to keep it going before the caution came out, but uh, he still ended up having a lot of damage. And in the process of all this, Garrett Smith only got the free pass. Lap 76, Kyle Busch ended up getting turned by Ryan Blaney coming out of turn number two, which sent him spinning to the inside and hitting the inside wall, therefore knocking Kyle Busch out of the race. This was with nine to go in stage number two. Lap 86, Brad Keselowski uh, managed to win stage number two. Uh, after a lot of the chaos that took place, especially uh, 10 laps prior you know, the race, Keselowski pulling off stage, pulling off a uh, win for stage number two. And pretty much throughout the race, uh, everybody was, there was a lot of pit strategy taking place. There were drivers coming in, uh, taking two tires, some of them taking four, some of them taking fuel only. But at the end of the day, pretty much uh, stage three was pretty calm from the looks of things. And Denny Hamlin, after finishing second uh, and with a uh, vibration problem, he ended up 
uh, redeeming himself the very next day and winning at Pocono. The turning point of this of the race, according to NASCAR.com, Denny Hamlin's ability to manage lap times and traffic in the final stage after pitting for two tires on lap 120 uh, from the lead, after building a huge gap over Harvick, who pitted on lap 105 for two tires on the lead when the de- and when Hamlin was in second. Whoever, I swear, whoever made these, uh, whoever made these little uh, things for the timelines, they should be fired. I'm just saying because they 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 just they type way too fast. Top 10 goes as follows for Pocono, the second race at Pocono. Denny Hamlin as the winner. Uh, Kevin Harvick coming home in the second position. Eric Jones third. Chase Elliott fourth. Eric Almarola coming home inside of the top five. Matt Benedetto finishing in sixth. William Byron seventh. Clint Boyer eighth. Alex Bowman ninth. And Martin Trix Jr. rounding out the top ten. So, we're going to do things just a little bit differently. When we come back... We're going to bring in our panelists and we're going to give the Pocono Weekend a grade and give our thoughts on the Pocono Weekend in the all in the process. Go over uh, the breaking stories, some of some other topics that we could talk about and vice versa. And a lot more to come on the NASCAR Pit Stop Show. Don't go away, folks. We'll be right back. And welcome back to episode 22 of the NASCAR Pit Stop Show. As always, Elijah Linder back with you. And I brought in our panelists uh, for this week. It's, you can say the uh, we're kind of the three musketeers, the new three musketeers of the NASCAR Pit Stop Show. It's Sean Arn and Wyatt Walker. Hey, hello, three mus- everyone. Three musketeers or the big three like the Xfinity Series last year. Well, either or, but, you know, I can do either or. But... I want to ask you guys, um, I'm going to give my thoughts uh, last, but I want to get your thoughts first. What were your, what are your thoughts on this uh, this past weekend in Pocono? Did you think that the excitement and the action that we saw actually lived up to the hype that we've been uh, kind of seeing from in the past when they were trying to promote this doubleheader weekend in Pocono? I mean, I, I enjoy I enjoyed all of it, definitely, and like you said, we were talking about it since the uh, schedule was released, but also at the same time, we already knew what was going to happen because after the whole pandemic, we've already had like two different doubleheader races, though. no, two or three right. doubleheader races a lot since like Darlington and Charlotte. All right. Maybe one more, I may be forgetting, I don't know. One of you could probably correct me on that one, but we, it was both expected, but also not expected at the same time, especially since the truck race had to be moved to Sunday, which brought, I believe, the first ever triple header. Yes. Which was, which I thought that was pretty good. Sean? All right. To be completely honest, I did not enjoy the weekend watching that, especially, mm. especially on especially on Sunday, because there was a there was a lot of problems with the Xfinity and Truck Series races, and, it's, and it kind of bummered the whole weekend just by those two races alone. But yeah, I I can I can kind of see where you're coming from, Sean, just from the standpoint of there was just a lot of. <laughs> The uh, Xfinity and Truck Series races, more so the Truck Series, uh, from what I've seen, have kind of been 
like a wreck fest, you know, and, uh, I mean, but you do have to give out the fact that we did kind of see, we did see some really good finishes. I mean, you look at trucks where, Sh where we thought Sheldon Creed was going to get his first win in the truck series. Brandon Jones passes him on the outside, I do believe. And, well, they're side by side for almost two thirds of the racetrack until they get out of uh, the tunnel turn. Uh, and then the Xfinity series thought Ross Chastain was going to pull it off. And then Chase Briscoe comes up to him in the tunnel turn, loosens him up a little bit, moves him up the track, and passes him for the win. Ham and the, the Cup series finish eh, really wasn't there. It was just there. It was just there, with Hamlin having a three-second advantage over Harvick, which, yes, he did get his redemption, uh, but I would just say that the, the Cup Series uh, race, the way that it finished, was not as exciting as what we've seen in the Truck and Xfinity Series races. So that's just a personal opinion of mine. But as far as Saturday's race goes, that was just a little bit more exciting because I thought that Hamlin was going to be able to close, close in on Harvick and try to uh, battle with him on the last lap, maybe go side by side and getting into turn one and probably uh, stay right with him all the way up until turn three or something like that. Uh, but that didn't happen because Hamlin had a vibration and he fell back a lot uh, once Harvick broke the draft fr um, that Hamlin was getting. Uh, so, you know, I mean, the only two finishes that we saw that were actually pretty exciting, which I said earlier, the Truck Series finish and the Xfinity finish from Sunday. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and we're going to give our personal grade, our personal ranking of the weekend from A to F. And um, it's pretty self-explanatory. A for perfect, B for it was pretty good. C for average, D for it could have been better, but it also could have been worse. E, basically, basically saying this was bad, and F saying just we're moving on. <laughs> um, uh, so, Wyatt, you're up first. Well, like you said about the uh, truck series having the best, having one of the craziest starts and finishes, I. Say that was pretty good. Expanding was pretty good. Cup series all right. I think I'm going to give it a C. All right. All right. I can't even see that. How about you, Sean? All right. Well, since we're having the grade the whole weekend, I'll agree the finishes were good in it's been an intrigue, but it wouldn't push it as high. So I'm going to put an average of a C. Alright. Okay, I can kind of see where you're coming from. I would definitely say this po this doubleheader weekend at Pocono, which had a lot of hype behind it, which then eventually turned into a single cup race on Saturday and then a triple header on Sunday. Um, I would definitely say I would give it a C+. Plus. Because it was still pretty average, despite the fact that we saw half of the races that we've seen on the weekend have really good finishes. Uh, you do have to throw into the factor that uh, there was not a ton of action in the cup race. Pretty decent action in the Xfinity race. Uh, well, despite the fact that you had some wreck fests, uh, well, some wrecks uh, in the Xfinity race. The truck race being a wreck fest. Uh, cup series race on Saturday just there <laughs> um, but still nonetheless C plus I definitely say it was this weekend at Pocono was pretty average alrighty so now let's get into some of the topics that we're gonna be talking about starting off with as Wyatt said before the show started NASCAR Heat 5 is coming out here pretty soon and I'm actually pretty excited to see what, how, well, how people are going to react to the game once they first play it. Uh, just, I heard that Wyatt said that there's a test session uh, setting added. So. That's right. And, uh, 
paint. And uh, they've added more stuff to the paint booths, especially with the fonts. You can now have different sets of fonts. And unlike Heat 4, you don't have to scroll like a thousand times to get to the number and the font you want. You can just go to the number, and there's different types of fonts you can pick from. So you pick your number, then just go next and pick your font. You can also be able to paint, have like colors, whatever color you want for your for the rims and for the spoilers, which I thought that was pretty cool. Ooh. Uh, what else was there? There's also they've actually made to like there's two main two main uh you know when you get on there's like a main area and you get to pick different spots? Yeah. Like online and career mode and all that stuff. Yeah. There's yeah. one that's in the great mode and when you click that it has all different options like like test sessions, multi split screen and et cetera and stuff. They've also added online challenges, which I thought would be pretty interesting. Online challenges. Ooh, that that would be actually really interesting. I am curious to see how that's gonna work. And I'm just going this off muscle memory of seeing like different videos of like of like who all did when they got the game, they did their show off of it. So mm -hmm. if you want if you don't if you don't believe me or take my word for it or the viewers, if you don't believe me, take my word for it. Go check out like into us before or or anyone else who has asked crazy five already. They've also added Tony Stewart in the gold edition. Ooh, that's pretty. I'm pretty stoked about because I even pre-ordered the gold edition, so I'm I'm really looking forward to this. And on the background, you can also it also shows like. It goes from different driver to driver, about five seconds each time, I'm guessing. So let's say it goes Austin Dillon, and it's going by order of the names. I'm going to say like Austin Dillon, and Ty Dillon, and Custom. I'm just, it's just going, if you get my point, it does that, which I think is pretty cool. Right. Yeah. And on the test, and on the test sessions, you have your test cars. I'm, I don't know if they have an Xfinity or a truck series, but I know it's in a cup series. And you can only use the test cars in the test sessions. So you can, so if you want, you can try to adjust your car a bit and have, don't worry about any AI. You're just by yourself at the track. Try and get some fast laps. Interesting. Hmm. And, and that's all I got on the top of my head about V5. There you go. So, <laughs> Wyatt, Wyatt knows a ton about this already. So, hey, I don't. I didn't need to say anything. I just take a back seat and let Wyatt talk about it. <laughs> okay. Well, so, you know, sorry, sorry about. Like I said, if you don't believe me, just check out other people's on other people's videos to see that I'm that I know what I'm talking about. Now back to you. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and uh, talk about Harrison Burton once again, because the last two weeks, uh, he really hasn't been doing all that well. So obviously, uh, a couple weeks prior, a couple episodes ago, we did talk about the last about Harrison Burton and the success that he's had uh, over the last 10 races at that particular time when he scored two wins and seven top fives and 10 top tens within the last 10 races. Well, the last two weeks for him really haven't been all that uh, all that good for him. At Talladega, he ended up finishing 32nd, got taken out on lap 95 in an accident. And then on lap 14, he got loose coming out of turn number one and hit about a similar spot to where Brandon Jones hit on lap one. And he had also ended up finishing, guess where? 32nd. Uh, so... I'm going to ask you guys, is it too early to say that um, Harrison Burton is kind of losing his magic just a little bit? Well, for one thing, for the Talladega race, it's just Talladega. He was just at the wrong place at the wrong time, so you can't really say much about that one. Right. The Pocono race, I just feel like that was kind of, um, 
I don't know, maybe like a rookie mistake or something, but that doesn't mean he's losing his bad, not losing his good streak. You've seen drivers come up from having a couple of bad races and up going back to some good races. So I think he's still all, I think he's still all right. You just have to have a couple of bad races in a, in a season. That's nothing new. I can, I can really see bad. where you're coming from. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, 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 I think he, I'd say he'll be back up and running this week or next week. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I am going to agree with what Wyatt's talking about. There, and I know, yeah, this is a slump, but it's, it's, we still have a long season left to go. So maybe Harrison Byrne can have some good luck here in the next several weeks. Who knows? I can see that. I can kind of see where you both are coming from on this because obviously with what happened at Talladega, it's Talladega, so anything can happen there. Anybody can uh, lead the race. Anybody can wreck out, regardless of what team you're on, especially in Harrison Burton's case, Joe Gibbs Racing, which arguably, regardless of whether it be Cup Series or Xfinity Series, is one of the strongest teams However, when you go to Talladega, everybody's on an equal playing field, and anybody can make a mistake, and anybody could get taken out, and Harrison Burton is no exception, and that's what happened to Talladega. Pocono, he got loose and hit the inside wall, and both races he ended up finishing, as I said earlier, 32nd, uh, but does that mean that he's lost his magic or is starting to lose it? No. It's just a little slump, and eventually at some point, uh, maybe this coming week at Indianapolis, this coming weekend, sorry, at Indianapolis, or maybe the next weekend following Indianapolis, Kentucky, maybe, maybe we will see him uh, kind of get back to his winning ways or his uh, uh, top five, top ten ways, but it's, it's just, we're just going to have to wait and see. So there's another driver that I also want to talk about, and pretty easily I was going to say, Chase Briscoe. So if you look at his stats for this year, he's got four wins, six top fives, nine top tens. He's led 245 laps this year and an average finish of 7.5. This is his best year yet. And I would definitely have to say, easily, he is one of a few drivers, in my mind, that is a solidified threat uh, for the Xfinity Series Championship, It should, which he is going to make the chase anyway, but I think he's going to be a solidified threat for the title. Wouldn't you agree with that, Wyatt? Oh, yeah, definitely. Because he's definitely following in his last year's teammate's footsteps. Cole Custer was in the big three then and Chase Briscoe which I had like a couple of wins last season not, not a whole lot but he is definitely filling in those shoes because he is going, he's winning a whole lot more races than he is I think, I think everyone's just winning a whole lot more because the big three has moved up but I really think they are doing really fantastic he is doing really fantastic this season and he's saying his goal is to try to get like eight to ten wins, keep with Stuart Haas. I wouldn't be surprised if he does, because he has like his four four wins now. He's got four, four wins. wins. So it would not surprise me, and I definitely see him being final four in the championship. And no surprise, going to be running for a championship, and maybe even get it. So. This don't surprise me at all. I would definitely say the same thing because, like I said, this is his best year yet. You take a look at the last two years that he's uh, that he's raced in the Xfinity Series. 2018, he was jumping between Roush and uh, Stuart Haas with the 1698 cars. Last year, he got one, well, 2018, sorry, one win, one top five, four top tens, led 45 laps, and had an average finish of 18.24 that was when when he when he was bouncing back and forth between the Roush Fenway number 60 car which was cursed and the 98 Stuart Haas racing machine which 
he did a little bit better in. 2019, last year, one win, 13 top fives, 26 top tens. He got two poles, led 196 laps, has an average finish of 8.21. This year, as I said, four wins, six top fives, nine top tens, 245 laps led with an average finish of 7.5. So, like I said, this is his best year yet. One of those components is that you look at uh, some of the is the notes. Some of the notes that uh, were from Cole Custer's car from the Xfinity Series last year and maybe the year before most likely are probably being used for the 98 car and that's one of the key components of why Chase Briscoe is having himself the best year yet. But still, regardless of the fact, I, I'm definitely saying that Briscoe is going to be one of those drivers that is going to be a solidified uh, threat for the Xfinity title. How about you, Sean? What do, do you say the same thing? Yes, I, I would actually agree. Chase Briscoe has been having one of his best years. And I and if this keeps up, then there's probably nobody that could go against him if we get to the finale and Chase Briscoe gets more wins. Alrighty. I would definitely well, have to... What? Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, but also, what you were saying, Elijah, about him getting wins, at least one win each year, the irony of, like, he's having not the best his rookie, rookie year, well, I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say that was the case rookie year, but you know what I'm saying, when he had to switch over from Roush and, and Stuart Haas, yeah, yeah, I don't even first to win there. It was at the track they just in they just brought up the roll So I, I thought that I thought that was kind of impressive by him. And then he like, went Iowa, and now he's got like four well, wins. He is going coming up, definitely. Right. All right. So there was one other thing that I wanted to talk about, but I think I'm going to save that for next week. Uh, but we're going to move on to another news item that came out uh, as of today that I'm recording this June 30th. Um, the Choose Cone, which was brought up by Austin Dillon a few, a couple months back or so, uh, is going to be used for the All-Star Race. Uh, and I'm still unsure of what a Choose Cone is and how it's going to work. So... Gentlemen, I'm going to turn to the both of you and ask, how do you think this is going to work? Welcome back to the NASCAR Pit Stop Show, episode 22, and gentlemen, we're going to be looking ahead to Indianapolis. This usually, this usually would be right around late July, early August or so, but uh, it's going to be in early July, right around 4th of July weekend, and I'm going to ask you guys, what do you think we're going to expect? Same kind of Indianapolis racing that we've seen in recent memory? Well, I'm going to I'm going to have to say yeah, but there is a small little twist to this because the Xfinity guys are not just racing in Indianapolis; they're racing the Indianapolis Road Course. That's which right. Is totally new to them, so it's definitely going definitely probably going to be the same old same old in the uh, Cup Series, but the Xfinity Series it's going to be a whole new different ball game. I'll definitely have to agree with that. How about you, Sean? What do you think? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna agree with why it says. Also, as we're even though they're gonna be doing racing alongside with the IndyCar, which will be there at the same time, but I, but it's gonna be a really good weekend. 
all together. Right. Alrighty. So, with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have ourselves a little ride along of Indianapolis Motor Speedway, how it's going to handle, what it looks like, and how these drivers are going to be tackling the racetrack, especially coming down pit road. So, without further ado, here it is a ride along from Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Indianapolis Motor Speedway is one of the oldest racetracks uh, ever on the NASCAR circuit and also just in racing in general it's this place has so much history but it's also a very challenging place to get around so here's what you have to do going into turn number one you may have to lift early in order to get into the first corner once you get down the short chute coming off of turn one into turn two it's not as bad, but you still have to have a consistent amount of speed getting through the corner. Down the back straightaway, same length as the uh, as the front stretch. And you're going to have to do the exact same thing. Lift early when you get into the corner, so that way you're able to get down to the white line, or at least as close to it as possible. Same thing with the short shoot off of three into four then back off a of turn four if you want to come down in the middle of the in the middle of the straightaway you can it's what some drivers do it's 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 a way to do it it kind of cuts the straightaway down it might I think it cuts the straightaway down a little bit I don't even know for sure but that's just what I think but then again I don't know but with an indie car with an Indy car, it is you can get through these corners very easily, and go speeds up to 130, uh, not 130, but 230 miles an hour. With a stock car, it's different because they're a little heavier. There's two cylinder. These cars have two less cylinders on the on the on the engine, so they have eight cylinders, and it's also just the fact that uh, you go about 180 miles an hour through these corners. Coming down pit road is pretty easy in some cases. Get down to 55, so right around 3,500, I want to say, or about 4,500 RPMs is where you want to be. And pit road here is very long, so during a green flag stop, it can take a lot of time to get down pit road and make sure you get this pit stop nailed down correctly. So let's say we're going to take a four tire stop and have some fuel as well. No mistakes on pit road. Just up. like of what I did there, you're going to have to back up. Back up, back up, back up. And if it's not enough, back up some more. And pit road here, just like any other place, it's very critical because if you lose time on the racetrack, a few seconds means a few extra yards sometimes laps go back up, go back up. and that's exactly what you don't want to do nice clean stop just under 15 seconds now when you get back out on the racetrack you're gonna have to you're, you need to use the access road down on the inside in order to uh, put get yourself back out onto the racetrack you don't want to come merging back out in front of traffic off the uh, turn one area heading into the short shoot and that's how you do pit stop in Indianapolis. The Xfinity race is going to be a little different because they're using the road course, so they're going to have to manage the brakes and the tires and the transmission, vice versa. Whereas Cup, it's a little bit simpler, except you have to deal with brakes. You have to deal with the trans. Well, not really transmission. Depends on if you use the transmission or not to shift down to third gear. Uh, but you also have to manage tire wear. Your water temperatures, if it's going to be a hot day, because uh, especially under a hot day like this, where you're going 400 miles at a two and a half mile racetrack, your water is bound to get to 200 degrees, and that's something that you're just going to have to keep an eye on and just be careful that you don't exceed 200 degrees. But uh, that's a ride along here at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. 
And that is a ride along from the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And it's definitely going to be one of those tracks where it's going to be a little challenging. I mean, uh, with the road course, it's going to be a little different. So with that, with the road course for the Xfinity Series, you're going to have to manage your braking. You're also going to have to manage, well, also your brakes as well, obviously. Uh, make sure you don't wheel hop getting into each corner. You also have to take care of your transmissions and also your tires and vice versa and always be sure to nail your braking points just right uh, as far as the cup series goes obviously you're gonna have to uh, take into consideration that if it's gonna be a hot day you're gonna want to keep your eye on the water temperatures because uh, obviously we all know that inside the race car it gets really hot almost up to 200 degrees at some points so you this so water temperature is going to have to be one thing you're going to have to watch out for, but also tire wear and also having to use your brakes because uh, the banking at Indianapolis is uh, 9 degrees, and that's not all that steep, and you really don't have a whole lot of room to work with. I mean, well, not a whole lot of banking to work with, that is. So I would definitely just have to say be careful uh, with braking and also everything else. All right, folks, so why don't we go ahead and get straight on down to predictions. And uh, before we actually do that, I want to uh, go over the point standings, which should appear on your screen. So coming into this weekend, Wyatt Walker still holds on to the points lead with 43 points. Then yours truly is second with 39 points. Then you have Zachary Taylor moving up to third with... Uh, 34 points. He got six points from this past weekend at Pocono. Sean Ard gets kicked back to fourth with 32. Cody Smart fifth with 19. Nathan Stapleton sixth with 16. Ryan Kendall seventh with 15. Travis Crampton eighth with nine and a half. Uh, Quentin Moore in ninth with one. And rounding out your top ten, that is Johnny Gardner still with zero points. So, folks. This is how we're going to be doing our predictions, just like we've, that we've been doing ever since the show ever began. We pick a driver that we think is going to win. Pretty self-explanatory. Driver that we think really hasn't been doing all that hot the last couple of weeks, so we're just coming up to a track that they completely suck at. So that's our driver to stay away from. And then we drive. Then we pick a driver that we think has just been on fire the last few weeks, and then we're coming up to and or coming up to a track where they're just super good at. So that's our dark horse pick. One point for each category uh, picked correctly, and uh, should be fun. <laughs> uh, let's go on here these predictions. So. Wyatt Walker, you are up first. I bet. Okay, I was I was actually legit thinking about Steve last night about what should I do, and uh, I forgot. I, I I know I remember what the Cup Series was, but I think I forgot the Xfinity. <laughs> well, uh, let me see. Uh, start off with the dark horse. He's been. He's been. He won the two out of four road course races last year, getting his two first two wins. My dark, I'm going, I'm going, this, oh well. My dark horse, I'm actually going to go with the, one of the road course guys, Austin Sendrick. Okay. My driver stay away from, as much as I've noticed, he's, He's been having a kind of a slump. I think it might continue this week, but he might do good next week. I'm gonna go with Harrison Burton. Driver stay away from. Mm. My driver my driver to win? He won one of the road courses. He got his first win at a road course. But that was back two years ago. I'm actually gonna go with the driver who's been Doing great this season, Chase Briscoe. Very, very good picks right there. Very good picks. Now the Cup Series, I've been, I know this one. My dark horse, he's been a real, he's been really good at Indianapolis. He got two wins back to back. He all, he probably could have gotten three if he hadn't gotten the wreck of March Rex season back in 2017. I'm going to go with Kyle Busch as the dark horse. Oh. 
All right. The, dri the driver to stay away from, think about this one too. And I'm thinking back to the extended driver. He's a rookie. He's probably been up there competing, but I don't think he actually got up and actually won. He never won one, but I'm not sure if he was actually close enough to get it. Drive stay away from I don't see him doing all that much. I think I'm going to Christopher Bell. Mm. Driver stay away from. Mm. My driver to win, he, I think he was close the last two years. Back at uh, eight, 18 and 19. I'm gonna go with Denny Hamlin. Oh, Ooh, interesting. Alrighty, alrighty. Sean Ard, you are up next, sir. Okay, I'm gonna try to do these pretty quick. So uh, let me start with the it's it's been these series first. So driver who I think could win. I'm gonna. Mm, I'm gonna give it to Jeremy Clements. Hmm. Because he has won a road. He has won at a road course before. That's so, bold. That's yeah. It's pretty bold right there. But hey, gotta go for it. Driver to stay away from. Now, this really the road course. Nobody is expected. So, but there are a few drivers that have not done well at that track. And the guy I'm choosing is Brandon Jones. Hmm. Okay. And now the dark horse. This guy has been on a hot streak. I'm going to be in it to chase Briscoe. Okay. All right. Yeah. Now to the Cup Series. I'm going to do the normal order, so don't you don't have to do anything towards me. Don't have to sue me here. Damn, we don't have to sue him? Yeah. No, I would. I was planning on doing that, but I decided not to. I'll wait for it. Well, well why? I guess you're not getting any money today. No, no money I'll for I'll, you. I'll just, I'll just tell him that I, I use Taylor method, anyways. Okay, well, let me get let me get done with these pits. So, driver who I who could win. Now there are several good guys that could win. Uh, actually. Hold on. About the whole money thing. I Here's the thing. He had a good shot a few years ago, but got caught up in the wreck. I'm choosing your boy, Martin Truex Jr. Hmm. And I'm probably okay. going to get sued. For that. I'm probably getting sued for that here. <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking about it. I. <laughs> <laughs> I might see you for seventy-eight thousand yeah, dollars. Get your lawyer if, if, ready. Yeah, uh, if, if, if you caught what I did there. Okay, a driver to stay away from. Uh, the driver I'm choosing got close to winning one year, but this is just a track that is it good for him. I'm choosing Brad Keselowski. Mm. And. The dark horse. I'm. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give it to Kevin Harvick. Okay. All right. I can see that. I can see that. All righty. So now, comes down to me, for this one. So, all righty. But uh, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and get on down to this. So for a driver to win, he's won multiple road courses before. I'm gonna go ahead. And I'm gonna say AJ Allmendinger is gonna be my driver to win, pretty much right off the bat. Uh, driver to stay away from. 
it's it's a little tough a little tough for me to say but unfortunately i am gonna have to say brandon jones is gonna be the driver to stay away from i'm just not sure still i mean sure i mean the, the last couple like last year and a little bit of this year he's done a lot better in the xfinity series but when it comes to a road course i'm still not a hundred percent sure on that just yet so so for now i'm saying brandon jones is my driver to stay away from and then my dark horse i'm gonna go ahead and say chase briscoe is gonna be my dark horse because the last few races yeah i mean he's been doing really good and especially with his uh, experience racing um sports cars uh He's been he's definitely improved a lot more on the road courses and I really think he's going to maybe get a top 5 or top 10 finish maybe win we'll see All right straight on to the cup series I'm going to say for my driver to win uh for the Brickyard 400 uh, it may be a different name but I'm still going to call it the Brickyard 400 for my driver to win I am gonna have to say Kevin Harvick is gonna be the driver to win uh, because if you go back to 20 2003 he's won it the Brickyard before in 2019 which was last year he ended up winning again so I'm thinking he could have something up his sleeve and could win at the Brickyard back-to-back -back years driver to stay away from as much as I don't want to put him on this on this category, I'm just gonna have to say Christopher Bell. Sure, he did. He has improved ever since NASCAR got restarted uh, at Darlington. I mean, with a few top tens here and there. Uh, but you know, when it comes to Indianapolis, I'm not sure on that yet. So for now, I'm gonna say Christopher Bell's my driver to stay away from. And for my dark horse, it's going to be a little bit of... I'm going to take a little bit of a different turn here. I'm going to say Matt Kenseth is my dark horse. If you go back to 2018 when he was driving on a limited schedule for uh, uh, Roush when he had a split schedule with the Six uh, and Trevor Bain, he won a stage and he actually did fairly well uh, the last... The last time that he was at Indianapolis and also I mean he's he's actually done fairly decently uh, in Indianapolis so I'm gonna say Kenseth is my dark horse all right. and all righty that's gonna do it for episode number 22 of the NASCAR Pit Stop Show. I want to thank you guys a lot for watching. If you guys like the video, go ahead and give it a like. If you have not considered subscribing yet, I recommend you do so in order to keep up with some fine content coming out in the near future, as well as some uh, stuff that's coming up later today. If you are watching this on Friday, there's going to be a six year anniversary uh, gaming slash Q&A live stream that will be coming out very soon. Uh, that'll be at, from 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, just uh, come on, come on in, say hi. If you want to ask a question, go ahead. Ask as many questions as you want. I really don't care how many you ask. Uh, and just also just enjoy some really good gaming and also whatever else I'm going to be doing. So. Yeah, before 11 o'clock starts on uh, at 7:30 uh, on the same day, so that should be, it's going to be a pretty jam-packed day to say the least. But anyways, want to thank you guys a lot for watching. On behalf of White Walker and Sean Ard, I'm Elijah Leonard from the Leonard Station signing out, and I will see you all on the very next video. Actually, in this case, I'll see you guys in a few hours. Yeah.